95.7 The Hog, Riggs, Guy, The Morning Hog, Brew Review. Welcome back. It's Friday. That's Vinny from SR Piranha Team. Woo! Let's do this. Let's get going. Ready? Put it in this hand. You just pour it that way. You pour Ooh. it that way. And there we go. Look at the head on that. That's awesome. We're all nice. good. Oh, we're yummy. Good, to go. good. We're ready to rumble. All hey, right. man. You're soloing today. We love it. Solo, solo, solo. It is. Interna- is it International? International Beer Day. And you know what yesterday was? I think you guys know that. Oh, we know. What we, was yesterday? We had a little celebration. You did? National IPA Day. Awesome. And it got weird. Guess what I brought today? Oh. The number one rated oh. IPA in the country. Uh, yeah, let's uh, have We're going to go ahead and work with hard. that, huh? So, Bell's so, too hard. In. So Bell's is our flavor of the day. And that's Bell's, not like the department store. No, they don't no. make their own beer. Absolutely. It's actually yeah. Larry Bell is the owner. So it okay. comes from Larry Bell's last name. All right. And yeah. Bell is a, uh, it's, it's apostrophe, by the way, in case you're looking it up. You want to Google that. Absolutely. Um, actually, it is apostrophe, yes. Uh, these guys are actually based out of um, Kalamazoo is their original brewery, but they have a huge one in Comstock, Michigan, okay. which is, I'm, when I mean big, I mean it is right. big. I've been up there, and the barrels go through the roof up to the ceiling. Um, like I say, their IPA is the number one rated IPA in the country. Wow. We'll get to that. But Bell's as a brewery is the number one rated brewery in the country. How does that happen all of a sudden out of, it's, out of Michigan? Out of the, well, what yeah. it is, it's, it's, yeah. it's about being uh, able to go to all the states now. Mm-hmm. It's about people stepping up and trying the IPAs yeah. and trying these different beers and, and getting to roll with them. So it's it's being around for a while and continually brewing that beer consistently. Remember we talk about yeah. that all the time? Yep. This is a consistent brew. So every okay. time you drink that too hearted, it's going to taste the same. And that's what you want to do. Right. How does it happen when some of those uh, breweries have uh, a, a beer, whatever kind it is, that strays recipe-wise? Is that just not good quality control when that happens? Sometimes it could be cleanliness in the tank. Yeah. It could be uh, different hops because it couldn't secure the proper hops. Uh, I got you. It could be okay. um, different additions done at the wrong times. Yeah. It could be done anything. Beer okay. is a science, and people mm-hmm. have to remember that. Yes, it's, it's, it's a recipe, but it's also yeah. a science. Right. So one of the hardest beers to actually reproduce over and over and over and over at that same consistency believe it or not is like Miller Lite or Coors Light because there's such a light beer that any kind of impartial flavor will oh, throw yeah. that off. Really? So those beers are some of the hardest beers to brew consistently. And really? People don't realize that, but it is. Really? So that's why it's important for these breweries. When you get in, you're going to take a couple of years to tweak your recipes, get them where you want them. You may brew it this way once and go, okay, I'm going to change it up a little bit and brew it, brew it. But then when you come to a point where you want it, you keep it that way, and that's where it stays consistent. Cool. And usually it becomes what they call a flagship beer, which is one of the main beers that comes out all the time year round and it helps make money for the brewery so they can do the specialty one-offs yeah. or the seasonals okay and bells is a uh, was did they start as like just a little craft was little tiny little? craft yeah. larry yeah. bell started uh like i say up in kalamazoo and then he kind of grew from there yeah. and he kept growing and growing and growing till what did where they do he is first now. what was their signature uh, first move first beer I believe it was the Amber Ale okay. Um, okay. that they came out with. It was the beautiful Amber Ale. I'm pretty sure that's which yeah. one it was. Yeah. Um, and then they kind of moved in. They have another beer, um, which unfortunately I went to pull it today and I'm out of it. Okay. It's called Oberon. It's, it's too an popular. American. Yeah. I know it's too popular. <laughs> it's an American wheat ale, mm-hmm. which is only produced year round here in Arizona. Really? That's the only two places you can get it year-round because they run it from baseball season to baseball season. Oh, okay. So he considers Oberon is actually the Lord of the Fairies um, in Midnight Summer's Dream. So just a little yeah. piece of history there. Too Hard it comes into play in literature as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember which book that was, but that comes well, in out of the book as well. Things. Actually, no, it was a little more. I think it was uh, um, the fella out of Key West. What's his name? Hemingway, thank yeah, you. It's one of Hemingway's head. books. Thank you, guys. I had a little, <laughs> had a little brain sneeze Shout there. out to Ernie Hemingway. Let's hear it. That's awesome. Um, but we, um, he likes to get into literature, so a lot of his stuff was based on literature. Okay. But uh, the Oberon is year-round in Florida and year-round in Arizona because he considers those uh, sunshine states where it's always summer, and that's their summer okay. seasonal. So a lot of times people come down from Michigan in January and go, how do you have Oberon? Yeah. Is it bad? Right. No, it's not bad. It's brewed fresh for us down here, so it works out pretty good. <laughs> 
it. Bad. Unfortunately, guys, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm out of it. But that is an American uh, wheat ale that is amazing. That's why I wanted to bring it to your attention. I'm looking at their website, bellsbeer.com, and it says their story. Their journey began with a 15 gallon soup kettle. <laughs> that's really? his homebrew. Yeah, his wow. homebrew system. Yep, actually, and that's where most of you guys start out is with a homebrew system. Yeah. So you get home brewing, you start brewing, then decide to brew, get into a little bit bigger. You buy a small kettle, work your way up, and then kind of go. That's where most of these guys started um, and work their way up through. But now um, it's a lot bigger than a soup kettle. Just yeah. to let you know. Yeah, that. yeah. Clearly, when you when you hit number one, you must be something right. Well, let's taste one of these. We well, got fine three of those. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Beers. Sorry, here yeah. we are talking, and we're not even tasting. What's going okay. on with that? Thanks for bringing that up, guy. No problem <laughs> he's always looking out for the flavor part of it Absolutely. and uh of course uh obviously if you've been to a store you've probably seen some of these bells products they are uh, sr prop puts these uh virtually everywhere right yeah yeah absolutely uh the pool time that we're going to do right now is a seasonal uh this comes out for the summer it is a belgian wheat yeah okay. uh, so it has a belgian yeast in it and it's made with tart cherries so it's going to be a a little bit unfiltered it's going to have a real nice flavor uh profile with the cherries on it a little tart not too sweet um, so it's going to have a almost a sour, but not quite. Okay, I've so, never I've never had this before. What What does a Belgian beer consist of? I mean, because I know you have your ambers, you have your lagers, you have your IPAs. It's pretty much the yeast that they're they're working in there, and then they work with certain hops and malts. But most of it, what's going to change those flavor profiles is that Belgian yeast. Oh, okay. So they're going to take that yeast, put it in there. It's going to impart different flavors than a, an American yeast or a German yeast or a heffy yeast. You're going to get different flavor profiles on the Belgian yeast. Okay. I brought a, a different. Hold on, before you pour, guys. I wanted to. I brought a different cup because I know we always talk about his hands. Oh, and I didn't yeah. want to oh, oh, I like. This. I brought. Uh, hold on. For the scale uh, of the camera, yeah, 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 we just want to get on. that. That's an actual full size cup. That's a full size cup there. So we. Uh, I like that. Now one. look at guys' hands on that thing. Now look Check at that. Huh? Oh, Red that's solo awesome. cup. Look at Fill that me up. Boy. I feel like a real man. Look wow. at that. See, he does. He look like one too. Look at that. Hey guys, by the way. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, just gonna put that in, yeah, That's put, the, put the filter on that mic. Secret situation going on here. <laughs> you know, screw you guys, I'm gonna use this one from now on. <laughs> no, I got a whole bunch of extra ones. I picked those up, all right, we'll, we'll compare. You got two hands, you can I, use both of them. I like it, I like it, I like it. All right, pool time ale. Pool time. Mm. Kind of sitting by the pool, enjoying yourself, relaxing, oh. sunning yourself. Look how hazy that mother Absolutely. is. Hey, huh? I, can I do suggest something? That Please. You, you don't sit by the pool not wearing pants. Make sure you have pants on. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you're going to want to be in the pool. And That's no fun. Well, yeah, because you got to put sunscreen everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this does have a very interesting uh, that, flavor to it. Mm. Look at that. Why are we so hazy on this? It's good. Well, it's that unfiltered. It's love love yep, that. That's your unfiltered. Those tart cherries, you're not getting sweet. Oh, you're getting that good yeah. Belgian. You, the Man, that is you, a ton of flavor. They are definitely there, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would uh, I'm not afraid of uh, taking some maraschinos and tossing them in a beer, but you wouldn't need that You here. wouldn't need that here. Yeah, absolutely. This is already covered. Well, that's outstanding. So I would throw that in a marinade as well. Yeah. Oh, this to marinate what fish or fish? <laughs> marinate fish with it. No. Uh, marinate. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> All right. So Why so, not? <laughs> pour it in your fish tank. See so what everybody happens. knows I'm going for pour some. Pour it in your fish tank. What, are you crazy? <laughs> well, it's an experiment. You know, you make these experiments with beer. You never know what's going to. You never turn know out. what's going to happen. Yeah. So I'm actually going for oral surgery after we're done this afternoon. R um, wow. So I'm a little bit nervous about going out there and have my mouth ripped oh, apart. So if man. I slip up a few times, I apologize. It's okay. All right, we're getting it's all good. Set. Anesthesia. Uh, I was thinking yeah. about drinking a four or five of these but i don't think my dentist is going to want me there sitting in a chair like that's that. that's true yeah so yeah you got an ex you got a built-in excuse so exactly. you had to do the brew review. i had to do the brew review <laughs> <laughs> Vinny is multitasking today all right so I, I, i'm digging the can puts me in a festive mood absolutely makes For me want time and it's uh, it's the view i have of my neighbor's pool right before i jump over the fence and go into theirs oh really i love that's, doing I, that's that, exactly yeah. what i see but yeah. the problem is that fence right there take me about 20 minutes to get over it um, yeah i just so, dig a hole oh is that what you do chrono <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, pool time is actually seasonal. It's coming to the end. Okay, um, You'll be able to find it at uh, Total and ABCs. Um, it's a great beer, and I think there's a few draft lines still out there. Uh, but this is the coming to the end of the summer season. Okay. The next season will be coming out. So That's great stuff right there, man. That's Absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. I like it. I mean, it's a real good pool time beer. i mean I, I don't is it the un it, the amount of flavor that's in this is it because it's unfiltered well, it or could is it be just the proteins the in there from the unfiltered yeah. give you that flavor kind of yeah. gives you some of that mouth feel on your tongue mm -hmm. uh the tart cherries you're using that belgian yeast you're getting those strong flavors from that yeah. as well yeah. um that's a lot to do with that so it's a pretty complex beer for just being a simple yeah. um wheat beer 
It's another one of those beers that both a man and a woman can enjoy. Absolutely. Yeah, I like those beers. Speaking of man and women and cherries, Mike, if you could just do me a solid. Oh, uh, yeah. More at cherry pie. Uh, uh, again? Whew. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Back to it. Uh, great. All right. Well, good. Cherries in that. I'm going to guess there's no cherries in that two-hearted IPA, no. but we don't need them. No, you don't need cherries when it comes oh, to two-hearted IPA. baby. Bring, bring the pain. Absolutely. I even was cool enough, and I brought the 16-ounce uh, two-hearted IPAs. Um, this, I believe, is 7.2%. This is number one rated IPA in the country. Now, how does it I, – I know there's like a, a science to the rating part, too, but that is – that's – that's uh, well. The science, actually, the rating is they have rating sites that people go on and drink the beer and they rate them. Okay. And they take all those ratings and they put them together, and that's pretty much where they come with. So they get all the information cool. from right. the public. This is not coming from from stores and retailers. This is coming from people who actually drink the beer. Yeah. So this rating is coming from those people. Okay. Um, you know, and and sometimes it's tough to have like our local guys. They don't get outside of Volusia Flagler, so there's not a bunch of people that are able to rate them right. outside of this. Okay. Um, but. With this one, it's it's state it's across the U.S. Yeah, a lot of people out there and are able to rate and do. Awesome. So this one comes with an ABV of uh, seven point zero, right? Yeah, uh, seven point zero. Yep. Yeah, you go. you're throwing some math into the equation. Oh, th- look at that again. A little bit of hazy happening. It's a pretty poor, isn't it? Two hearted huh? ale. Oh boy, that's beautiful. Just IPA goodness, just sitting there waiting for us. And I'm guessing too. Uh, we talk about the how the IPAs are. Uh, people get a little jaded sometimes on the IPAs. They but do, I, I, but I don't feel like this is one of those beers that you could have too many of. Well, no. Uh, but you try it, and like I'm not say, in like a day, perhaps. But it's, it's a very well balanced IPA, and that's the key to what we talk about all the time. It's that balance in an IPA. You don't want that stickiness sticking right. to it. Well, I don't. There are yeah. people who do, and if you do, awesome. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Uh, but me, I don't like that. Uh, right. Where this gives me just enough on my tongue to know that it's an IPA, yeah. give a good coat to it, and give me those flavor profiles that I'm right. looking for. I can see why this is rated number one. Yeah, yeah, I would, uh, I would certainly jump on an online poll and check this box for sure. The yeah, this is this is a beer that you continuously can drink. All right, so, and, and two hearted ale, a, a, a Hemingway reference. Yes, yeah, Go figure. In a book about fishing, and it's, what is it? A trout that has two hearts? Is that what it is? I don't know. Um, so, or it's a two heart river. There's something to that effect. Um, I, I used to know the story, but let's make up a story about that, shall we? Okay. Uh, Ernest Hemingway was fishing once, was fishing and once, it, and enjoying a an unnamed uh, IPA, IPA at the time. Yep. And he hooked a fish. Found out it had and two he hearts. went in to pull the and he actually pulled the heart out of the fish. Like it. And he held the beating heart in his hand okay. and he began to write a book. All right. And then he thought the fish was deceased. He buried it because yeah. that's what an honorable fisherman will do. And, it's and then the fish came back to life and dug its way out of the dirt and killed him. All right. So what I think we should do with that is I'll put it down on paper and yeah. send it out to Larry Bell, and we'll see how far we get with it. Yeah. See? Check your fish for two hearts at all times. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, actually from his short story, Big Two-Hearted River. Yeah. Thank you. I knew it had something to do with that. It was Ernest Hemingway, correct? Uh, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Well. Sorry, Ernie. My bad. Uh-uh. It's very good, though. And I wish I had two hearts so I could pour more of this. Absolutely. I was going to do stomachs. I, I like kind of like the idea of a zombie fish. I think yeah. we should figure oh, out something yeah. with that. God, that. Can we just use that for something? We should do something with that. You know? <gasps> That'd be a great beer, zombie Bells, fish. Bells, rigs, and guys, zombie, zombie fish. fish. Well, you got it. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, rigs, and guys, zombie fish. You know, it's, We're a, bit, it's a picture of us smiling, oh, but our oh, hearts oh, are ripped is out. That, is that for a little more of a pour? Yes, well, it's please. an IPA. I don't know why you'd pour. Oh, wow. Oh, there. How dare you poor guy one IPA? <laughs> I know, right? How dare I? That's craziness. So, uh, you know, great, great story. Uh, there again, back uh, with the, I knew that I knew it had to do with the uh, the river and the trout on the fish. And, right. Um, so, but it's that a great is, IPA. Yes, very good. Very good. Very sessionable. Like I say, um, it's it's an amazing IPA. It's been out there a long time. And we talk about the uh, Western IPAs, the Eastern IPAs. So where this this it's is kind of in the middle, Michigan. So yeah. how does that? It's kind of in the middle. It's kind of a little both. It's not really yeah. Western, not really an Eastern. Yeah. It's kind of his own version. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really well balanced. I like uh, it. That's the key to it is the balance. Yeah. So. It's not aggressive and it's full of flavor. Full of flavor. And you're right, not aggressive. So. Yeah. Oh, I can like that. Yeah. That could be. That's going to be a long. That's going to be a long lunch. For us later. Absolutely. <laughs> On this Friday. We're going to have to go have some International Beer Day. 
Huh. Seems uh, only appropriate. I still have zombie fish stuck in my head. I'm gonna have to do something with that. I like you know, it. So. I mean, look, this is it's a great band name for one thing. Uh-huh. Uh, it'd be it'd make for a good song, definitely for the our, bo- our book that we're writing. We're collaborating. Absolutely. I think that would be a perfect plot twist. It would be a perfect plot twist, and I like it for a beer name. I really would did. you be interested in if we adapt this for the film? Would you be interested in playing the uh, the scientist? I think you got a lab coat. Okay, I but you're would. also an undercover agent. I like it. So from have- hold on. Mars. Perfect. Okay, Wait a minute. Good. How much alcohol is in this <laughs> thing again? <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> can everybody maybe tell I, it's maybe, Friday? <laughs> maybe, I should, maybe I should have the little cups. <laughs> we can all tell it's Friday. All right. Uh, and you're holding one bottle over there, too. Yeah. This is actually uh, double cream stout. Uh, okay. Because I didn't have the Oberon, I right. figured, out. Right, let me bring in a uh, special double cream. This okay. is actually made with 10 different malts. Uh, so it's going to be a, uh, I believe there's lactose in there for the cream. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a real nice uh, stout. And we're going to get a good, good hearty All right. Flavor. Lactose, by the way, if, if you're watching this right now or if you're hearing this and you're lactose intolerant, don't go away. We've got something for you, all right? We'll make you lactose tolerant when you see that. Look at that. Oh, man. Uh, hey, here's another time for a, a first time on the show. All right. I'm going to be double fisting. Uh-oh. Look oh, at that. Oh, man. Oh, man. He's going to be double zombie fishing. Ooh. He's going to be double cream with the IPA chaser. All right, so as you can see, nice little head on there. Yes. You can see the color. Beautiful dark. Those are the 10 specialty roasted malts. And the roasted malt. You can definitely smell the the color or the color and flavor. And the flavor, okay. So depending on how you roast a malt, um, is the different flavors you're going to get out of it. You roast it at a lighter temperature for a longer time. It's going to be a lighter, cleaner malt, kind of like you would get in an, uh, a Miller Lite or a Coors Light. Okay. You roast it for a little bit long, at a higher heat, shorter time, pulls out the it pulls out the uh, starches and caramelizes them. You get a sweeter flavor profile okay. out of it. You roast them a little bit uh, higher heat for a little bit longer. That's where you get your coffee, burnt roast kind of flavor profile. Yeah. And it's going to depend on the malt, too. The malts are going to impart different flavors as okay. well. I know we've talked about this, too, but I, I, have, I do not drink coffee, so I don't even know what coffee uh, a, There's a, good a little bit of it flavor. in there. But I'm getting what I believe to be coffee in this, and it's pretty damn good. Makes me think I should drink coffee now. There is. Well, that, you know what? I'd rather just drink this. I'm not going to lie to you. I yeah. was the same thing. So I had a bad experience when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. My mother, I was drinking hot chocolate. I had a great time. I was like I know, eight years old, and hot chocolate was too hot. <laughs> so I put it on the table, and yeah. I went over, and I grabbed what I thought was my hot chocolate Uh-oh. and went to chug it. Turned out it was my mom's cold coffee with a cigarette put out in it. <laughs> so that stuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks, thanks for laughing, guy. So that stuck in my head for a long time. Yeah, and I could not get near coffee. Every time I smelled I it, I was like cigarette ash. I'd you know go into oh. convulsions. It wasn't pretty. Then came Wake and Bake by Terrapin, which is their uh, imperial coffee. Yeah, I started drinking that. Now I can't get rid of coffee. It's a little bit I'm game good. changer. I'm yeah. still not smoking cigarettes, but I'm, yeah. I'm drinking coffee and I'm drinking <laughs> coffee beers. <laughs> that's right, and that is a good. You know, that's actually a good lesson for the kids too. Just don't, look at what you're drinking. Don't drink the cigs. Absolutely. And also look what you're drinking. Yeah, don't put stuff in your drink. Uh, wow, but that is, uh, and that's very, that is very smooth. That is not heavy. That is not uh, a big, thick, chewy beer. That's very uh, light. Part of the lactose with the mouthfeel. Yeah. That's where you're getting that creamy. That's why they call it the cream stout. You get right. a nice mouth body mm-hmm. uh, to it. And it is really, t- there's no real bitterness, pronounced bitterness underneath. Okay. A little bit of coffee, like you talked about, a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. Um, and they're just a real nice, clean, clean cream stout. It'd go great with ice cream and cake. Uh, yeah. You're not kidding. <laughs> you know, so you can reduce this down. Um, add a little sugar, reduce it down, and use it as a drizzle over your ice cream. Really? Or you can just do an ice cream float, pour this in, put a pop oh. of vanilla in there, and just go ahead and drink it. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Now we know. What, I know what you're doing this weekend, then. It's going to be floating in ice cream. It's, it's going <laughs> to be Bell's Parfaits. Absolutely. I just <laughs> want to know if you're going to have a kitty kitty there. That's all I'm looking for. <laughs> well, meow to that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, that's really good, though. And, and uh, for those who don't like, I, I was never a... a a big fan of dark beers because I'd only had like a big, thick, frothy Russian can- imperial stout. Yes, or, exactly. Or, absolutely. But this is not at all like nope. that. This is just all nope. flavor. Nice and clean, easy, uh, easy to drink. Six point one percent. So yeah. it's not very high in alcohol. Okay. Um, it's it's a year round stout. You can call it. I mean, you can drink yeah. it in warmer weather. You can drink it in the cooler weather, and right. it's it's going to help you out either way. So we talked before too about uh, beers that taste like 
a flavor versus a flavor that also is it, 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 you have a beer base mm-hmm. that has a little flavor to it. How would you classify this? Would this it, this is uh this is all beer. So it's all, all coming beer. from the malt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no additives to it at yeah. all. It's all cool. the malts awesome. that they're using in there. Those ten, ten different specialty malts yeah. that are going to give you those different flavors that you're right. feeling through there. I love that. Um, I did you know now that we're talking about the uh, uh, imperial stouts and we're getting a little bit. Um, I want to backtrack a little bit. You guys remember when we had Tomoka on, and then later on we had um, um, yeah. Copper Bottom. I think it was reversed. Yes. Yeah. Well, they finally came out with the Copper Bottom beer barreled rum. Oh. It's going to be released this weekend. It was in a barrel of the that uh, Tomoka had the Russian Imperial Stout on. Okay. Um, so it's going to be released over at Copper Bottom. I am super excited. It's going to be first one coming out of that batch. Okay. Of course, we're going to have Persimmon Hollow coming. We're going to have Moonrise coming. But this is the first one coming out. So we're pretty excited. So if you happen to get over near there on Saturday, just stop in. This is a rum that's in a beer barrel. So what happened is we took the rum. He took the barrel. It was a whiskey barrel. He put his rum. Okay. Okay. And, he's, and, he, and he aged his rum in it. Then he took the rum out. Gave the barrel to uh, Tomoka. Okay. They put their Russian Imperial Stout in it, aged their Imperial Stout, oh, yeah. took the beer out, gave him the barrel back, and then he took the rum, put it back in the barrel, and finished it off on the barrel. Oh, wow. So That's going to have it's a very... Absolutely. So it's going to have a really cool flavor profile coming yeah. out in the rum and an awesome profile coming out in the beer. I'm not sure when Tomoka's releasing the beer, okay. uh, but I know they have to bottle it and, and do what they're doing. Okay. So it's going to be awesome. So they actually did that with Wops Hops, and they did it with the coconut uh, from yeah. Wops Hops, okay. and, and he just got the barrel back, so he's going to put the rum on it. They released their their uh, bottle already. I think I have a bottle in the truck. Remind me next week. I'll bring it up. We'll try it. We'll sample it afterwards, but let all you right. go with it. Because um, I haven't even tried it yet. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. So we're looking forward. It's all that local. We're trying to keep everything going with the local sure. businesses, working with local businesses. Absolutely. And so go support. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, wh- whatever it is that you see local, you wanted to try local. If you haven't tried it, try it local first. Absolutely. That's the way and to go. And that's you know a great part with guys like Bell's. Um, they support local guys. They'll help them out. They call yeah. them up. You know, they're guys up in Michigan. They mm-hmm. call them up and need some moths or some hops. They'll work with them. They're not going to, you know, throw them out and do whatever. Right. So that's why it's nice about the craft beer business. The bigger they get, the cooler they stay. Right. Um, and it's not a it's not a bad situation. So, cool. you know, we counted yesterday. I think right now we have 12 or 13 breweries done or on the books for Volusia Flagler County. Really? Yeah. Okay. And we have... In the county. Wow. In the county. Okay. In Volusia and yeah. Flagler. Right. Um, Excuse me. And then we have um, the distillery, Copper Bottom. Mm-hmm. And we have another one getting ready to open. There's an, I think there's another one up in Palm Coast. Then we have a winery. We have a meadery. So we have a lot of local stuff here, guys. I know everybody wants to go to Orlando or go to Jack's. Right. Look here. We've got a bunch here. Sure. Chill here. Relax. Look around. Go to these breweries. Support yeah. the wineries. Support the breweries. Support everybody. Yeah. Reach out. So, to, go to the SR Parade. Go to SR yeah. Parade website. Right. We've right. got all this stuff. You want to find out where to buy the uh, buy these beers to go go to sr parat's website plug in the beer it'll show you where to go find it it runs off our system so you know it's in stock we sold it to them you can go out there and get it i love it I love you guys it. want to uh, check these guys out on facebook it's bell's brewery on facebook or if you want to go to their website it's bellsbeer.com yeah and uh, guys this is one of my favorite breweries love these guys um i can't have favorites because i deal with so many sure so that's why i'm saying this <laughs> one of my favorites yes um these guys we've been selling them for a long time mm-hmm. uh, it blew my mind when i went up to their um brewery uh it was just amazing uh, yeah. just to look around up there and see how big it was it was just huge it was amazing and they don't get many years many months out of the year where it's not uh locked in with ice and snow yeah. and stuff up there yeah. right I, uh, yeah i had to go up um, uh we had to go up this to michigan my fiance's grandfather passed away so we had to drive up to michigan and it was in the winter time and it was like minus five degrees oh. and you know I, I lived in upstate new york and the sun was out and i'm like you know what this is not too bad sure. right yeah, as soon as the sun went down it was done <laughs> i was like there was no heat anywhere there was nothing right. it was frozen cold and that's how it is up there like the tundra yeah and that double cream style i'm sure on this a, would on keep a cold you warm on yeah. a cold night, it's fine on a on a, on a warm day as well. But. And this will keep you this will keep you warm or cold. Oh, it's gonna absolutely. Uh, it's and gonna this do is it. when you're when you're dipping in your pool up there when it's seventy five degrees at the hottest point right. in Michigan, or when it's one hundred seventy five degrees at its hottest point down here in Florida. You can go ahead and work with this one. That's right. The pool time. If you crawl into your neighbor's uh, pool without his knowledge, and he's yeah. got uh, solar panels on his roof, and he heats it up, and the water's a little bit warm, like a hot tub, and it's not like exactly what you would hope because you don't want to cool off. Absolutely. But then you think, well, it's still warm. I'll enjoy one of those. You uh, have pool a pool time. Cool right. It sounds like you've had experience with that. No. What are you talking about? <laughs> not at all. No, okay. No, no. <laughs>
No more so than the zombie fish story. Now I like the zombie fish. Uh, We're gonna come up with something. Uh, all right. Do we have anything? Uh, so obviously this weekend, you just want to celebrate International Beer yeah. Day today, but you can celebrate it the whole weekend, right? Go out and try some stuff. Absolutely. Even though IPA Day passed yesterday, go out there and have some IPAs. Yeah. You drink an IPA Day for the International Day. Just kind of go out there and enjoy it. Uh, we don't need a reason to drink beer. Just no. go ahead and drink it. Absolutely. They keep coming up with these days though, and I'll take them. I'll take, yeah. <laughs> Still, I just want to go drink it. So. We're gonna make one. Absolutely. In honor of it being International Beer Day, yeah. I'm going to the bar. Wait. <laughs> Are you going? Yeah. Well, sure you know yeah. what? Let me, cheers. Right. Let me cheers with your full-size cup. 